Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Horizon Forbidden West. So we're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a, a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an, an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for NVIDIA, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people <laughs> are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimizes your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically. And you just lower the software like that. And you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software. And also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's, it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, so first of all, window mode, make sure that you're playing full screen. All those other modes is causing a lot of issue in this game, so super important to go full screen. Make sure that you're playing native with your display resolution. Uh, so if you want to change your resolution, I really recommend to use an upscaler technique or the dynamic resolution skating. Uh, refresh rate, make sure that you have the proper one. In my case, it's 240. I always disactivate my V-Sync, less input lag, but honestly, you're playing a solo game, so if you don't like those steering lines, you can definitely activate your V-Sync, or you can use other technology like FreeSync or G-Sync. If you have an NVIDIA card, I really recommend to activate the low latency over there. After that, you have those techniques, so the upscale method, you have a couple of options. So if you have an RTX card, for sure, go with DLSS. With quality, you can expect 12% boost in your FPS. Not a huge fan of balance performance or even ultra performance. I feel like the game is very blurry when you're moving. Quality is the best. And also, if you have a 4000 series uh, card from NVIDIA, frame generation is huge. Put this one at on, you can expect 30% boost in your FPS. If you have FSR, you can definitely go with FSR if you have an AMD card with quality. And I really recommend to download the mode right now on internet. You have a mod that you can install and you can have FSR tree. It's a lot better, so I really recommend to using it. And also you have the XESS available for uh, Intel video card. If you don't want to use upscaling method, I don't recommend TA8, it's too blurry. I recommend something like SMAA or just disactivate it. No anti-aliasing, you will have more FPS. And if you want pure image quality, definitely run the LAA. But man, this game is not running well right now on PC, so it's not necessarily a good recommendation to do right now. Now in the graphic parameter, texture quality, if you have 8 gig of more on VRAM on your video card, definitely run this. Uh, if you have 6 gig, go high, 4 gig medium, less than 4 gig, go with low. Uh, for anisotropic filtering, I recommend to you uh, to just follow what you put on very high. So 16x very high, i 8x, medium 4x. So just follow the bracket over there and you should be fine. Shadow quality, this one is pretty huge in this game. I recommend to go with low. Not a huge difference between very low and low. But again, if you're very limited with your computer, you don't have a good computer, disactivate the shadow. The game will look a lot flat, but you can expect like 16% boost in your FPS. I recommend to screen space shadow to disactivate it. You can expect a nice 3% boost over there. And beyond inclusion, you don't have a lava option. It's more like activate it or not. Honestly, the game looks very flat without it. I recommend to run it. And at the end of the guide, if you're still struggling with your FPS, go back and disactivate your ambient inclusion. Screen space reflection, I recommend to go with low. You can expect 5% boost in your FPS. For all those settings over there, level of uh, detail, air quality, um, crowd is a little bit different, terrain quality and water quality, you can definitely run medium, not a huge difference between very low, low and medium, you can expect like 2 FPS difference for each uh, um, bracket, 
Uh, for the crowd, 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 sorry, quality, if you have like a bad CPU, I recommend to use low. You will see a huge impact. I did a test on my laptop and honestly, I, I was getting like 10% FPS more. I think I had like a big bottleneck with my CPU over there. So definitely look at this. Um, cloud quality, this one is huge, honestly. If you compare very high to low, you can expect 10% boost in your FPS. So definitely go with low. I play default over there. Uh, fill of view. Uh, fill of view, if you go higher uh, than 0%, that this is pretty much the default. You can expect less FPS. You will render more stuff in front of you. So don't go too crazy with your field of view. Depth of field, I recommend to deactivate it for uh, visibility. Bloom also. Motion blur, you don't want that. Put this one at zero. Again, uh, your image will be a lot more clearer. And after that, I recommend to deactivate all those other options. Lens flare, vignette, radial. Blur, chromatic aberration, not all of those will provide you more FPS, but it will be better for your visual. And also you will gain a nice 4% boost in your FPS with those. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my Horizon Forbidden West guide. If you have any questions, just come in in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM, and we'll try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.